present our talk on open source solutions for the Norwegian Stone Age, Chaos Theory, and uh, the Edit Project, which will run from 2018 to 2020. Um, today's talk, we will start to say a few words about the corporation Musit, <clears throat> and I'll talk about the project Edit, and then turn to Chaos Theory and mention uh, the Poincaré sets and uh, finds in Norwegian landscapes. Mm -hmm. uh, the <coughs> Musit Museum IT is a cooperation between uh, the five Norwegian university museums that started in 2007. We have uh, in Norway five university museums, one in Oslo, oops, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's in uh, Oslo, Stavanger, Bergen, Trondheim, and uh, Tromsø, and we are then from the museum in, in Oslo, um, which is the largest uh, of, of them. The museum organization is responsible for development and maintenance of the databases, and uh, we have several databases, both in the humanities and the natural sciences, and the archaeology is the largest among the, the uh, cultural historical ones. Uh, here is an image uh, made by Henrik Joel Hansen for the CAA in Aarhus in 1992 where he talked about how one could relate um, uh, uh, SMR uh, registers in uh, different European countries. Uh, he took, uh, had the Denmark uh, as his example where they had a long tradition of centralized and going out uh, with connections to several other uh, databases and in the same way it's possible now to connect archaeological information all over Europe. The project Ariadne has uh, worked on this for a long uh, time and uh, as more and more people are using the Cydoc CRM as a model for their, their databases, this uh, kind of cooperation and sharing of data is becoming easier um, year by year. Uh, here is <coughs> an example from our own um, database, the Musit database in archaeology with all the museums has then the uh, geo-referenced finds. We have all in all 1.4 million uh, entries from our museum. We publish uh, 547 uh, entries, 300,000 of them are connected to the National SMR register. And uh, the number of entries in the SMR that are linked to this is uh, 6,000. So it's a uh, quite large and good set of, uh, of uh, georeference data. Okay. Um, this is an example of the kind of information that comes on this uh, in these pages. You can see you have the, like the museum number, the geographical information, the county, municipality, uh, etc. And uh, the link at the location ID is then a link to the open SMR uh, reg register in Norway. The image uh, you see, it's possible to see that in the high resolution and also to download it. And we publish these images with a Creative <coughs> Commons 4.0 license with um, uh, attribution and uh, share alike. At the bottom is the original uh, text from the catalog from the 19th century. Yeah. We have um, working on, <coughs> this illustrates the workflow in Norwegian archaeology. We don't have any private companies in Norway that do archaeology and that makes the situation more easy than in many other countries. But uh, still as you can see with only these five units doing uh, archaeological excavation and cataloging data, it goes for reporting at our museum and uh, in the different counties in Norway, uh, at the um, Archaeological Institute at the University and NICA, which is an organization that does excavations. And then data is uploaded in the Riksantikvaren, the SMR uh, system, and you sit our museum in the Archive database, and also a lot of the the documentation goes to the archive and the uh, object, the artifacts themselves, of course, to the magazine. And now in the future we may get some changes and we are allowed to do excavations in Norway so that more excavations will be done by the counties. And then it becomes more important that 
we have uh, described a very good data flow for all this, uh, this information. And uh, this is what we are <coughs> going to achieve with the project added, archaeological digital excavation documentation. It's a project uh, funded by the Norwegian Research Council. <coughs> And what we're going, going to do there is to establish the core metadata, describe the data flow for county, directorate, museums. We're going to implement a repository, migrate existing data, create an open data web interface for downloading, and we'll make it possible to do queries across single projects. So that when I want to know how many post holes are related to the to 500 um, AD, I will do one query and I will get that out as a map and as a text file. That will be quite good. And then um, uh, down on the left is the number of um, uh, projects that we have so far in the same Intrasys um, uh, system. We, uh, all the universities, museums and ECU decided to use this in 2011 so that the documented excavations are rather similar already in Norway, and that makes our effort easier. We have uh, 12, 1,300 uh, projects uh, documented in this way now. Okay. Yes. So uh, this is <coughs> an illustration of the connection between uh, MUSIT and uh, the project added. We have already in the MUSIT corporation systems for finds, for reports, for media, for uh, analysis and so that ADIT can concentrate on the documentation and presentation of site areas and structures in the, in the excavations. This is an example of things coming from excavations and the surveys will of course have the same type of information. And this <coughs> illustrates how the ADIT base, geodatabase, will be an integrated part of the music and uh, in the middle we have research, cultural um, heritage management and dissemination of information and there will be a flow between these music added and SMR uh, delivering to and getting information from these uh, three areas. Um, the dissemination part will be more important uh, probably for uh, uh, the museums uh, but also the museums has a responsibility in the cultural heritage management, so all these three are uh, connected very much. On the right side you see an example of the SMR um, um, information uh, presented. On the left side you see uh, objects and also archaeological reports uh, on the, one of our own web pages. Uh, you can see that uh, content is more important than design in this part of our Work. In the middle is a commercial page. Someone who has taken information from both the OpenSMR and our databases and created a web page that makes this information uh, more easily accessible for a lot of people. And that is exactly what we hope to achieve, that it will gain interest by more people so that they will present their own solutions and use our data in, in many different ways. This is an example of <coughs> the type of data that we are getting um, collecting during excavations and that we are then integrating in, uh, in added. So we are done on the very detailed information, information about each structure that is uh, documented at the excavations. And uh, <coughs> this will then be visible and available. So we accept that most people will be more, the general people will be more interested in um, in uh, information on like uh, houses and graves, while researchers may be just as interested in information about the uh, individual post homes and other structures from the excavations. So we will have two levels of interaction with the database, so we will be able to both to uh, do a query on the aggregated data, like the houses, and on the detailed, like the um, individual post homes. Now a few words about chaos theory. <coughs> we did uh, um, use this a bit some 15 years ago. Uh, chaos theory is uh, then, you can see it as part of nonlinear system theory, uh, uh, a system 
that can by itself, without any outer uh, uh, interference, change, shift between a state of order and a, a chaotic state. Um, a recent paper has given some uh, new information about this. Gleick published a book about chaos in, uh, in 1988, and then in the 90s a lot of people worked about chaos, and then it became quiet again, but recently Susanna Spencer Wood um, in 1913, 2013 published an inspiring article again on this, where she also see connections between nonlinear systems theory, feminism, and post-processoralism. And uh, uh, the possibilities that uh, arise when you describe culture as a nonlinear system, a chaotic system, that is quite intriguing. The uh, system can have different uh, types of states. A uh, stable system will go towards um, um, uh, more uh, simple attractors, like the pendulum uh, movement you have on the top of the left, and also the system down to the left is um, more stable systems, while the chaotic system can uh, uh, behave according to what you can, uh, different types of attractors an attractor that you can't really describe in advance, you can only see what it looks like, and that is why it is called a strange attractor, and an example of that is what you see on the right here. Uh, strange attractor can not be described any other way than by looking at what it uh, is, and when you think of the prehistoric culture as a strange attractor, of course we can't really observe this anymore. But what we can observe is the physical remains of the uh, activities that people performed in the prehistory. And these, uh, uh, these uh, activities, these traces, these artifacts, can then be seen as points on a point array map. And the Poincaré map is an outline of the strange attractor. It's a multidimensional surface, and uh, in general, it will have one dimension less than the attractor. So then, when we see this movement as a movement in space time in four dimensions, one can see the three dimensional landscape as the Poincaré map. And from the Poincaré map, one can then deduce things about the movement in the four dimensional space. The Norwegian High Mountains is a good place to try to uh, elaborate on this. And uh, uh, on the right here is an image showing Stone Age finds near a quartzite outcrop. Uh, one often defines or generally defines sites when one do an archaeological survey. And uh, uh, when you define a site, you also describe the landscape for yourself as a series of points. And the movement from one point to another, the flow that has been through time and through the landscape, is then not so visible. It's uh, almost forgotten when you just look at the points. Uh, one way to get around that is to work on what can be called the cyclist survey. And the map on the left has a quartzite quarry in the middle, and then it's uh, 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 the lines is uh, where the survey walked, and the other lines, uh, the zigzag, is where he was finding artifacts. So it's another way of describing the landscape that can be more um, dynamic. And then one can think that one assembly, or perhaps even one single find, can then be seen as points on this Poincaré map. And um, this can then be used to try to reveal underlying patterns, which is a random intentionality. And random intentionality is also another way of describing chaos. Here's one example from uh, Bavatten. In uh, Hemsedal, uh, Buskerud, you see the, uh, yeah, in, the, in South Norway, uh, at uh, 1125 meters above sea level. And uh, Vavatn is a lake with a lot of finds around it. And uh, also then an example of how impossible it is 
to really define all these different points as, as uh, sites, but they are um, uh, showing the, the movement in the landscape. Uh, different scale levels with each site or each artifact as the unit will give different impressions of the motions in the landscape. And the possibility to work with material in the sense of the site they survey will where each artifact is analyzed in an open space and not restrained to a site within a certain area will give new insights and open new venues of research. So, ending with this uh, perhaps chaotic situation from the mission excavation, um, we have now looked at the different um, uh, at the, the start where we have this enormous amount of, of data in the databases <coughs> that can be downloaded and all of it is uh, georeferenced and uh, this amount of, of georeferenced data opens then quite new possibilities for new types of, of um, analysis and uh, in um, uh, map uh, setting and then also to see it in a chaos theory light makes it uh, possible to see it in, in other new ways than to just uh, look at it in the, in the single site and within the site. Uh,